Hello everyone, it's Shani Haynes. Welcome to my little tutorial on how I made this interlock double concertina card. And the original design, I watched a few different YouTubes from some very clever people around the world and sort of came up with my own formula but the main person that I did learn from was Sam Collot from the UK. So thank you, Sam. So this is using the new free celebration products, which come out next month, in a few days actually. And um, I just wanted, I did a little class yesterday and I wanted to show people how we can make use of this great paper. So. All this gorgeous designer series paper is yours free with a $90 sale. And I thought, let's make some use of that and have some fun. That's the penguin, is it penguin playful? Oh. Penguin Playmates. So, the other product that I'm using, which was is a freebie, is this gorgeous, sparkly, almost mermaidy mermaidy stuff and that is called be dazzling and it comes in six by six special paper you get eight sheets in it and i just oh, i'm loving it i've got so much of it so to make this card i will have all the written sizing and everything out for you but just to show you how i put it together because it's hard to describe if you can't see it now, I'm sorry my screen's not any bigger than it than it is. Um, so you'll need three pieces of Whisper White or basic white. One piece is four by 11 and three quarters. Now, this is Australian A4 paper. That's the whole width, the whole length of an A4 paper. If you don't have that, I think the US have it a little bit shorter, just slightly shorter, so it'll still work. So with this piece, to score, I might be a bit backwards in here. It's a bit squashy. Okay, so with this piece, you score at half an inch, two inches, and then turn the whole thing around. The reason you do that, because if, if you are using a different length of paper, it'll still work. Again, half inch, two inch, and score in the middle. So in the middle for this piece, it's actually um, seven, uh, five and seven eighths, which is just before the six, just before six inches, okay? So that's, that's your center piece. So this piece that we're, we're doing here is actually this bit here. Okay, so just so you know what we're doing, because it can get confusing when I got a bit lost in some of the tutorials. So that is what this is. Now to make the actual base, the whole card base, you need one piece, which is... Well, this one's ten and a half, so ten and a half by six inches. Sorry, you can't see it all here, but it's ten and a half all the way along by six down. And we're going to score that in half. Well, it will be in half because we're gonna there's a tag on it. Score it at five inches and then at ten. I don't know if you can see, and at ten inches. And that way you actually have it will end up looking like a card base with a little bit on the end. Okay, I don't know if you can see that bit. That's where we're going to join the other part of this card, which is, let me get it, is another piece, so a separate piece of basic white. This one is 10 by 6, so it's exactly the same, but it hasn't got that last half on there. So... Again, score it at five in the middle. So it again forms another card base. So you've basically got two card bases, 
one with a half inch extra on it and that is going to be joined eventually not yet like so okay so that that makes your whole big that makes this whole big piece that's holding it all together makes this makes this bit all this this big bit here okay so they are two major pieces next next thing you'll need choose your color I'm going to do a different color this time instead of the um oh what is it I can't even remember freesia the fresh freesia I'm going to use misty moonlight so you need four pieces of this so you need to cut it out from two pieces of cardstock two sheets of cardstock and these squares are six by five so this has to be just under so if that's six by five, that's five and that's six, you cut this seven eighths of an inch, like one eighth of an inch smaller. So you've got that nice little white crisp edge to it. So you need to cut four of those and they are going to go two in the, two in on the inside of your card, like so. Where is it? Two are going to go on the inside of your card and then two on the outside. You'll also need with your designer series paper two pieces of that and that's going to sit on the outer edge of your card on the inside okay and that is again just one eighth of an inch in from the edge so it's five by six this is just just under five by six like I said everything will be written out in the measurements all right so that's let's just leave it at that for now all the bits you can put these two pieces away for now you won't need them yet the hardest part is choosing your colors once you know what colors you want now what I've used stamp wise is the penguin place which again is a new one coming out with a new mini catalog there is a punch with that I haven't got it here because I didn't use it and also the other stamps or, well dies really I've used the give it a whirl dies because I wanted to use these stars and what else did I use oops I use these new well they're new to me the little tags what are they called tailor-made tags and <clears throat> excuse me I used the largest and the two smallest in here so that's what I used those three okay I'll show you what I did with them in a minute if you don't have those tags that's fine you can just cut rectangles it doesn't really it won't make much difference I also used the rectangle stitch framelits. If you don't have these, any, any rectangle will do, or you can just use your cutter and cut it manually. It doesn't matter. As long as this rectangle is bigger than this piece that's gonna go inside, you want it to fit through. So that's all that matters. It doesn't have to be this particular one. But I use this one and it's just for sizing. It is the third biggest. Okay, it's the third biggest one. And it's going to get a workout today. <laughs> it certainly will. The last thing I used was what are they called? Basic basic border dies. And I'm you guessed it, I'm using the cloud, so I'm, I've used this one, which is really sweet. So, again, not necessary. You can hand cut it. You don't even need to do it. But that's what I'm using, and I thought I'd just share that with you. So, the first thing we need to do is we want to cut out our two 
rectangles. We want to cut these out, these two in the middle, this side and this side, okay? So there's more ways than one way to roam. Yesterday in the class, we tried a different way than I did originally, and that was by joining up the two matting pieces. First off, I'll just get rid of this scoreboard. I don't need that anymore. And what I did was join them up together like so, place this die as central, using my eye as I could, a little bit of washi tape, and I put it through my cutter machine as, a, as two pieces together. So I've got my machine here. I'll just go and cut that now. Have a look at that while I do this. It won't take long. Now you may want to cut it through twice to get it to cut through the paper. Let's see if it worked. It did. So that only went through once, but you may want to cut it through twice. These pieces are now just spare. You can save them and use them for something else. We don't use them for this. Okay, so now we've got our two, our two frames. Like so. And we want to now make sure they fit on these two pieces. So you can't, it's hard to see, but there is actually a score line there. So what we wanna do is line up. Now, so that's your score line. You want to put these frames on the ins to inside pieces like so, because that's how it's gonna join. All right, so make sure you do them on the two inside pieces. And what I did was we just traced it with a pencil, lined it up exactly as if we're going to glue it on. And then traced it. Whoops, that's not very good tracing, is it? Now these new die, these dies do sit exactly. So I just added a little bit of a I don't know if you can see what I did. I added just a little line in so I can actually see when I put this on, I can see where the corners are, okay? So we wanna cut that and this one at the same time. So what you do is you can, we wanna put them together. So we're going to put them through together if you, you, you want this bit sticking out, okay? So when you want them level, but when you cut them through, have this bit sticking up because we want this bit centered in here. So again, I'm going to line up my, my die and put it through the machine. Just bear with me a minute. in there sorry hopefully I can edit this out but if I can't I'm sorry <laughs> okay Poor little machine gets a workout. So hopefully that was straight enough. Whoops. Doesn't matter that I've ripped that because that won't be seen. Again, you've got two spare, two spare pieces. You can do what you like with them. We won't be using them. We don't need the die anymore. It's a 
bit of washi tape. Okay, so now we've got our two base pieces and we can fold and score. And let me just get all this out of the way. Fold and burnish on the score lines. Just to make sure it's nice and square. And we're going to glue them together. So we've got, we'll make sure that they fit up, they line up nicely, and they do. So we're going to put a bit of glue, how are we going to do this, a bit of glue this way, just flatten that out. So we want to glue, put glue on this tab and glue these two pieces together. Let's hope we've got glue here. When we glue, you want to make sure that your card closes and lines up perfectly. Like it's a little bit out there, but nothing like performing under pressure, is there? Okay, but what I mean is we want this line to be nice and straight, and it is. So that's great. Okay, so I'll make sure that holds really well. So that is the inside of your car. The outside of the car, which you're not going to see, is the join. And that horrible tear I did from the washi. <clears throat> Excuse me. The inside is, it looks like that. Okay, so what we want is this to be a mountain fold and these to be valley that's to be a valley fold so now it's starting to come together that's how your card will look now now we can add the frames I've used these dies so much they get a bit woolly so we want to make sure they fit nice. <coughs> Excuse me, I am a bit croaky this morning. It's not too bad, it's pretty good. Okay. Make sure the glue is working. Okay, so we want to glue that on. Like so. I'm not trying to make this a super long video, so I won't fuss too much getting it perfect because I think it's more important that you see how I do it. <clears throat> I don't want you dying of boredom watching this. <laughs> it can get too long otherwise. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, and this one. So it's the same card. I'm using the same designer series paper but I'm using one of the other complementary colours which is the misty moonlight just for something a little bit different but it's such a cute fun card now you see I've really cut this very crooked but can't be helped that's what it is there we go so we've got the we've got our nice framework there and we'll just fold that make sure it's not going to buckle because we want that nice and flat. And we want that to fold. There we go. It does, it, it is quite a thick card, 
Now, this doesn't fit a standard envelope, or not a standard Australian envelope. You can make an envelope for it. I haven't got that far yet. I don't think it's, it's not on my priority list right now. <laughs> I just want to make this card because it was so cute. Okay, now you can use either side of your designer series paper. I want to keep it a little softer and a little more neutral, so I'm going to glue, have the dotty side up. One of my ladies yesterday made this card, but she wanted it to be a birthday card for a little girl, or for a little granddaughter. And um, so she didn't worry about the Christmas theme. She used a birthday theme which was really sweet and she said look she just loves all that sort of lovely pretty finishes that we did on it with the stars and and we used the um, new snowflakes which are so sparkly and pretty there we are so we've stuck that on so now we've basically got our card base happening there the <clears throat> Please forgive my croakiness. The next bit, I've actually got it half prepared to save some time. It is the template. It is this template that I, I've explained earlier, the four by 11 and three quarters, which is the whole length of a, a four sheet. I've cut two pieces of that gorgeous shimmery paper and they will fit you can't see the score marks, but they sort of fit there. And I've also cut two pieces. These are roughly two by three and three quarters by two inches. And then I've used that die to cut the cute little cloudy look. So before I stick anything on, I'm just going to add a bit of color here. And I'm going to use Misty Moonlight and my my brush and I'm going to start down the bottom and then add the color here now last time I used this brush I actually had Pacific Point on it so it could be a bit darker than I want so I'm just going to do it quite light I'm starting down here because the clouds will cover that you won't see it or the not clouds but you know the snow so just a little just a little hint of colour here and here. That's all that's needed. And now I can glue my, if I can pick it up. Now I'm going to glue on my clouds. Like so. And I'm also going to glue on my lovely little... Actually, before, before I do that, I might just fold the score lines. Okay, so this, this one's a mountain fold. And this one's a... That's a mountain fold. That's a mountain fold. valley when you fold make sure it's square that these all line up nice and square that's a mountain I'm do it that side and that's a mountain so it should be looking like that okay then we can glue on these bits <clears throat>
Okay. Okay, now before I stick anything else on, I'm gonna decorate it once I've put it in situ because I found it a bit easier. So, because this card doesn't have anything on the front and back, it's safe. There's no upside down, Miss Jane, here. It's all, doesn't matter. This is the right way up unless you want to have it as sky and clouds. Thread it through your, cut, your base. Now, you can lay this flat. So lay it all flat. This is the bit we want to look at. This little tab and this sparkly piece fold back on itself. Line it up. You want to line it up so it's equal as equal as you can get it here, all the you know as far as you can see, and also not flush. Don't line this up flush with the card end, but just in a little bit on the designer paper. Okay, and go back and check that works there. Then we are going to open it up. Keep pressure on it. Don't let it move. I don't know if you can see, hang on. Add some glue on your, that little tab. And it's going to, I've moved it, but it doesn't matter. We're going to stick it down. Right, line it all up again, like I showed, and stick it down. Oh, of course, I'm trying, I've got the camera head in my way. There we are. We want it as square as we can. You do have that quarter inch to play with in here, in this bit, so give it a nice press. Check that it's glued on nicely. Thread it back through your paper, back through your little window there. And as you can see, you've already, you've got that one on, okay. There we are. So we're going to repeat that on this side. So put that through. I'm going to turn it upside down so you can see on the see clearly. Now what this time we're going to have glue on here again, but we're going to close the card. So when you close the card, this piece goes flat. Just like how you glued, okay? And then over, and this piece is gonna go flat. We're gonna put glue on here. And close the card. And that way it finds its natural spot. A bit of glue here I think okay so we'll put the right way up so now you've actually got your card put together can you see sometimes you have to train this to close properly my first one didn't this one's closing a lot more naturally Give it a couple of tests and practices. So that's that's the start of the inside. How about that, huh? Now, the outside cover on the front, we'll decorate this in a minute. The outside piece, let me just get this glue off. There's a, that's annoying, it's catching on everything. Okay, I think that was the only bit, yep. So the front cover, this one I you I um behave. This one I did the tags and I've just basically done the same thing but with different paper. So we're just going to attach these all together and stamp a little sentiment on here. 
So I'm just using, I think I'll use the Misty Moonlight. Seasons, greetings. There we go. And I'm going to dimension all that up. I'll tell you why, because sticking anything onto glittery, sparkly paper is a challenge. <laughs> this one is certainly, certainly is. So I'm going to line up the holes and like so. Oh, that was really bad. Let me do it this way. Okay. So I'll line up the holes and then I'm going to, where's my glue? Where's my glue? Yeah. Then I'm going to glue it onto this piece. I hope this is helpful, people. And when the glue says, no, I'm not working anymore, that's not helpful. Okay. So then we're going to glue this one on. Yeah. This piece, this time I'm using the DSP because it's the front cover. I thought it'd be cute with all the little critters showing up. Might be time to get a new glue. Okay. Put him on there. And I'm going to now attach this to the front cover while things aren't too chunky inside because once your card gets all your embellishments put inside, it's very difficult to get this on nice and smooth. So check that it is the right way up and put your cover on. It's got a bit of, there we go. And then this before we attach this tag, we need to put some ribbon on. Now I used, you can use any ribbon you like, I used the Simply Elegant Trim in the silver. And I also use this new glittered organdy ribbon and it's gorgeous. It's white, this is called white, but I don't know if you can see, look at it. It's just beautiful. So I cut myself a generous amount because tying a bow like this is torture. Tying two pieces of ribbon in one bow. I gave this a really sharp pointy bit because I'm going to thread that through as well and pull it through with my trusty tweezers. There we go. So, oh, sorry. And let's see, how much do I need to tie a bow? Quite a lot. Okay, so I'm going to give myself a generous amount. But I don't tie anything until I've actually anchored this to the card. The reason I do that is because it makes tying the bow so much easier. Now you can dimensional or glue it flat, it's up to you. I'm going to go about, should have gone a bit over, but that's all right, it's on now. And then I can tie this bow because I've got, it's being held, I'm not having to use 60. Now I'm using all my stamp pads to hold my card down. Keep knocking. I'm a left hander, I'm khaki handed. Keep knocking my phone. Okay, so I'm not the world's best bow tie, I'll just do my best. Tying with two different ribbons is not easy, especially when 
it's that stiff silver one. And voila, we have it. And yes, I did probably use way too much ribbon, but that's life. It's for demonstration purposes. Probably would have been a little bit more. There we are. So it's something super pretty and makes the card pop. Now, you can leave it like that. Or I was thinking I could add my penguin down here. He'd be cute. So I might do that later. Okay, so the outside's done on the front. The back, let's do the back. This is the fourth piece of cardstock that I've cut. So remember that's five by six. So this is just under. And a piece of Whisper White, which is um, four and a half by five and a half. And that works really well. This is going to get stamped on. What I did here was Merry and Bright. Now that is from a different stamp set. I didn't show you. That's from Tidings and Trimmings. Merry and bright and I just thought that was lovely because it just fits the theme of the snow and, and the happiness so I'll get that one out because I forgot to get him out and a clean base just happened to have one that's lucky and I'm going to use the misty moonlight again Sometimes it's nice to use the same colour as the cardstock you're using. Other times I just use the um, Early Espresso. And I'm also going to stamp a few little stars. Look at me getting myself in a mess here. Hope this isn't going too long for you. A few little stars. And... There, that's cute. And that's going to get glued onto this piece. So you've got a nice space to write lots of, a nice long message to that someone special. Telling my ladies yesterday, this is like a card in itself, this back bit. And then that gets stuck onto making sure you cut your, everything's the right way up. And that gets stuck onto the back. Probably better than what I did, but oops, well, okay, we're on. Okay, now I have prepared and fussy cut all my bits out earlier. They're all from that designer paper that I showed you. The back of the card, I'm going to use a little penguin with his green scarf. He's going to get glued flat, like so. And this cute little fox is jumping up on the penguin, having a bit of a play being silly in the snow. And he's going to sit, jump up like so. Okay, and I've also got a little bird. He's so cute. Not my best fussy cutting, but there we go. And I glued him flat last time, but one of the girls put him, he mounted him and he looked, he looked brilliant. So he was, he's getting mounted this time. The mini dimensional. So that's the back of your card, front of your card. Let's open up and do the inside now. So. I haven't shown you yet. Another new product is this gorgeous snowfall. Wonderful snowflakes. How many do you get in there? You get 24 of them. They're not adhesive. They just sit flat. Or you, if you notice, there's a little centerpiece that is the same size as a dimensional, which is pretty cool. 
So what I've done is I've cut one in half through my guillotine, not, not a slider cutter, but a guillotine. And I'm going to use a whole one here. And you can either glue it flat or put a dimensional on it, but it does, it might catch. So just be aware of that. And yes, it is fiddly putting your card, getting your card all pretty. Now there's two sides. There's a matte side, and then there's this iridescent side. So I'm going to glue the matte side down, if I can get any glue out. And a little bit on here, and you'll see why, because when you open and close your card, it does catch a little, so just be careful with that. And that's sort of going in that top corner, over the blue work, over the blue shading and um, my little Mr. Snowman, Mr. Polar Bear, sorry, he is going to get mounted up onto that side. I don't know if you like fussy cutting. I, I could do a little bit, but I can't sit there for hours and enjoy it like some people. But I love the fact these characters are decent size, easy to cut out really, and there's no colouring in, which I do love colouring in, but don't need to. So there he is, all cool. This side, I am going to use my two halves. You can keep this and punch out all sorts of shapes with that, but um, I haven't done anything with this today again a little bit of just a little bit of glue on some bits and that's going we want the card flat so you can glue down so there we go that's going to go up there And the other half I have here, I was, I'm going to put there, okay, oopsie, so I hope you've enjoyed this, I hope it's helped you, if you're not doing the same theme, Christmassy, snowflakey theme. You've probably finished your card or finished learning how to put the basics of the card together. I'd love to see what you've made. I'd love to see. Uh, now this little penguin, he's going to get glued flat. I think I did lift him. Oh no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mount him. I might have to cut some bits. So we're going to have a polar bear there, so we want to sort of make sure he's not going to get totally left out. And we're going to have a little fox there. So a little foxy, he gets some dimensionals as well. There we go. I haven't planned this well, have I? Hang on. his tail okay so he's up the top jumping around and then polar bear he gets just a bit down the bottom like so And 
line it up and see. So a little bit of glue here on his head. There we go. And then he'll sit nicely mounted up. Now, we've got one more thing to show you. And then, well, actually two more things. Bye. Oh, don't know what I've done with that. Well, I did a little bit of a stamp here, which I won't bother doing, save time. But it was just that Be Cool, Be Chill, Be Merry, which is on the Penguin stamp set. I won't bother with that, but I'm going to, I cut out the stars and I do have them. Oh, here they are. Oh, here, here's the Chill, Be Merry. It's right in front of me. Um, there's the stars. So they basically went random um, one can go there that was that's the biggest one and I'll put the next biggest one there I found with this with this shimmer paper it it works better with dies than it does with punches. It's I've punched deers out with it, and I, I did punch some stars with it, but I found these dies that cut beautifully compared to punching with the punches because it is quite thick paper. So there we have it, my friends. Our beautiful... Let's get this all... Get him back in his little spot, yep. Our beautiful... Interlock double Constantina card. And we've done it in the misty moonlight this time. Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you another time. Thank you. Bye-bye.